Hello, I'm Dean Kay for Audix Microphones. Welcome to the FP Quad mic video. These are the four essential microphones you need to cover most basic drum miking situations, whether you are performing live or in the studio. Inside the FP Quad microphone pack, you'll find an F6 for the kick drum, an F5 for snare, and two F9 condensers for overheads. These four mics are the drum mic survival kit. Don't go to the gig without them. In order to maximize the benefits of the FP Quad mic kit, we've enlisted the help of our friend, session drummer and clinician, star of stage and screen, Mike Snyder. Welcome, Mike. Dean, it's great to be here again at Onyx. Love it here. It's always nice to come down and talk mics and geek out. Yeah, well, last time we did the How to Mic a Drum Kit video with extensive critical mic placement on Audix mics on every drum, really maximizing your control of the drum kit. But now we're talking about the FP Quad. This is really the minimum amount of drum mics that you need to cover you in most situations, right? Yeah, the idea behind it really is to have mics that you carry around with you uh, so you're in control of not just your drum sound and cymbal sound, but the sound of the mics that are used to create that sound, both in a live environment or in, in, in a lot of recording environments. And it's economical, too. It's not going to break the bank for you to go around and, and get a great drum sound in the club. No, not at all. I mean, club, clubs are notorious for um, you kind of get whatever's left over. You know, so I've many times been accosted with uh, a mic that looks like it's been in the construction industry, not in the music industry. And they're coming for, at me with a mic to mic my bass drum that I would never in a million years use to mic my bass drum. Right. And so in those situations, because I carry my own mics, you know, I'll say, hey, you know, why don't you try blah, blah, blah. And they, the front of house guy's like, oh, hey, yeah, I'd love to try that. Let's do that. You know, and, and, and your drums are going to sound better and he's going to sound better and the band's going to sound better. Yeah, the FP quad, you have that and you say, look, this is going to be better than the hammer you're handing me right That's now. Right. I'll sound good, you'll look like a star. Exactly. Excellent. Well, I would imagine that since we're using the minimum amount of microphones on your drum kit, that mic placement is really going to be crucial here. It is, and, and mic placement is dependent a lot on the style of music you're playing. And if I'm playing you know, a fusion style where it's more complete kit oriented, or I'm playing you know, a jazz uh, uh, performance where it's drum set oriented, complete drum set oriented, uh, it's going to be a little slightly different miking technique than if I'm playing a groove-oriented music, like a, a kind of a rock thing or a funk thing or a soul thing, where that's really hi-hat, snare drum, and kick drum oriented, as opposed to complete drum set oriented. Right. Yeah. So let's go around the kit and uh, get some mic techniques from you on how to make your FP Quad mic kit sound the best. Awesome. Let's do it. Let's talk about where to place these microphones using the FP Quad miking technique. Let's start with the F6 on the kick drum. The Audix F6 microphone is designed specifically for instruments requiring extended low-frequency reproduction, such as a kick drum. Place this mic correctly in the kick drum, and you don't really have to do much EQ adjusting on the mixing board. The sound is pretty much ready to go. Placement's pretty simple. I've covered it quite extensively in the How to Mic a Drum Kit uh, set of videos, so you'll want to check those out if you haven't yet. But basically, to recap, there are essentially two positions for miking a ported kick drum. One is taking the mic and angling it inside the drum and pointing it towards the beater. That I use for music that is more kick drum driven, like rock or funk. Uh, if I want a little rounder sound, what I'm going to do is just rotate the mic away from the kick drum beater and towards the edge of the head and, and the shell. And that'll give a little rounder sound. Now, this inline design of the F6 makes it really easy to get it through the port. Pretty much that simple. Now, you also notice that I've taken the cord and utilized one of the wing nuts on the stand to make sure that the mic cord doesn't touch either the edge of the hole or drape over the head, because that can rattle and cause a pretty ugly sound. Now, if you're using a drum that doesn't have a port on it, like Stanton Moore uses it a lot, there are two miking techniques he really uses. One is to place the mic about two fingers distance away from the head and about a third to halfway from the edge to the center. That's where a lot of the resonance of the drum comes from. Now, if you find this position is a little too round or boomy, you can alternatively take the mic 
place it on the other side of the drum near the kick drum pedal and mic it close to where the beater makes contact with the batter head. That'll give you a lot more thump. There you have it, miking the kick with the F6. Pretty darn simple. The next microphone in the FP Quad Pack is the F5. This is a great multi-use microphone. It sounds great on many instruments, guitar amps, congas, percussion, toms. But for the FP Quad mic setup, you'll want to use it on the snare drum. The FP Quad Pack has an F5 snare drum mic included. Now that's just one snare drum mic. In the past micing videos, I've talked about using two mics, top and bottom, to mic the snare drum. In this instance, we're just gonna use a single mic to mic the top of the drum and use mic placement variations to bring out the tone of the drum we want to enhance. Mic placement of the F5 is what's going to determine the tonal characteristic of the drum. Now, if I place the microphone pointing more towards the edge of the drum, I'm going to pick up the overtones of the drum, more of the high, whiny part of this drum sound, and less fundamental pitch, which originates from the center of the head. There you have it kind of whiny. Now, if I want more fundamental pitch out of my snare drum, because that pitch originates from the center of the head, basically all I have to do is position the mic to point towards the center of the drum. That's going to accentuate the fundamental and minimize or reject some of the whine or ring that comes from the edge of the drum. You can see the mic's pointing towards the center of the drum. It was a pretty fat sound. You want to use that for rock and funk and styles of music that are driven more by the backbeat. You don't have to use just those two mic positions. You can use positions anywhere in between them. The idea is to get the sound. So I'm just going to move the mic from the center to the edge and you can see some of the sound difference. It's not rocket science. Experiment, don't be afraid, you're not gonna break anything. One of the beautiful things about the, the F5 and the F6 is they work in tandem with one another because they're pre-EQ'd out of the box to accentuate the frequencies you want to accentuate in the snare drum or the kick drum and to minimize the frequencies you wanna do away with. There's no overlap or conflicting frequencies. They work really well together, doing things that generally the front of house or the engineer is gonna to have to do with EQ. It's already done for you. Okay, the kick and snare mics are in position and sounding great. Now we have our two condenser mics to get the rest of the kit in the mix. Here is where people sometimes get confused. There are many schools of thought on where to put the overhead mics, and it gets even more confusing because different situations might call for different approaches. Here's Mike Snyder to help sort us out. You get two F9s in the FP quad pack. We're utilizing them in the four mic setup as overhead mics. Now, position of those mics is a little, can be a little tricky. It really depends on what style of music you're playing and what environment you're playing in, be it recording or a live environment. So we're gonna go through some of those subtleties a little bit right now. This first overhead position is really suitable when you wanna pick up the entire drum set. You want a complete drum sound. You want to hear the toms, you want to hear the, the cymbals, you want to hear everything in a, uh, as a complete kit. You're not focusing on any one particular part of the drum set. Here's an example of the FP Quad Pack in action with the mic set at a pretty high standard stereo spread. There you got it. Using the FP quad pack, the F9s, I pulled the stereo pair down closer to the drum set. They're gonna now pick up really 
what's in front of the microphone and reject some of the things that are on the side, like the toms. So I'm gonna pick up essentially more cymbals than toms. This is a great position for live stage sound because it's gonna reject also some of the other stage volume for bleeding in to the microphones. I'm also pointing the mic towards the cymbal that I think is gonna be the quieter of the two cymbals over here, which is gonna be the ride cymbal, inherently I know this, and I'm splitting the difference between the hi-hat and the crash cymbal over here. So I'm gonna pick up some hi-hat, I'm gonna pick up some crash, all is gonna be good. Here's a little bit of a plain example. In this configuration, I'm using the FP quad pack to employ a single or mono overhead miking technique. I've taken the second overhead condenser mic, the F9, and I'm using it as a hi-hat mic. In this setup, there's gonna be no phasing problems. This is the idiot proof setup. Mono overhead mic uh, and a hi-hat mic. I'm gonna use this miking setup for music that is more hi-hat kick and snare driven, rock, funk, that sort of style. It really captures every aspect of the drum set, but in a way that drives more popular styles of music. Here's a little bit of an example. In the previous setups, I've shown you how to get great live sounds. With this XY pattern using the FP quad pack, I'm gonna show you how to get a really great recorded sound. So for a quiet environments, I'm gonna steer you towards using this setup. It's gonna pick up evenly everything you hear around the drum set. And essentially what you hear is what the mics are gonna hear and pick up. So you can self-mix yourself while you're playing. It's a great setup. This is what it sounds like. So there you have it. With the FP quad miking system, you get your entire drum kit mic'd up completely with only four mics and four channels. Yeah, a lot of times you go to a club and they'll have just four channels for the drums. Uh, you have a big band and a small board, 
this is going to be the way to go to keep control of your sound. And oftentimes you go to a club and they may not even have four mics for you. So you bring them along with the FP quad system and you're ready to go take control of your sound. Absolutely. Remember, it's your sound. You're in control of it. And the sound guy's going to like you because you're bringing in great gear to help you and him sound better. Mike Snyder, thanks for your expertise and wisdom. We appreciate it. Always a pleasure. I'm Dean Kay for Audix Microphones. Thanks for watching. And I'm not. <laughs>